Hey Band Network Remote Teaching Series. Welcome to the Hey Band Network. This is the Remote Teaching Series. And today we have Christine Cumberlidge from Central Junior High, the HEB School District up in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, welcome to the Hey Band Network. Hey, thank you for inviting me. So this, this is real exciting. I'll let you tell everybody about your program in a sec, but your band performed at Midwest this past December. Um, so congrats on that accomplishment. Thank you. It was, I, I can't say enough good things about Midwest. I think it's a incredible experience. I would do it again in a heartbeat. So it was a lot of fun for our kids and a really special moment in my career. That's cool. Um, so I, you have a special circumstance at your school um, because you're, you have a true junior high sense that we don't see too, too often anymore. Um, so I'll let you explain that and we'll kind of get in to talk about remote teaching. So tell us about Central Junior High. Well, okay, we are just a little bit west of DFW Airport, um, and we're in the HEB School District, which is K through 6, and then junior high is 7, 8, 9, and then the high schools are 10, 11, 12. And actually, years ago, the community um, voted to keep it that way, which has made us the very last junior highs in the state of Texas, but um, it's a great system. I think it is really beneficial to keep kids younger, just a little bit longer um, but we do start in seventh grade so I know those high school guys are always playing a little bit of catch-up with only a three-year high school. Well let's talk about the makeup of the program how many kids how many ensembles do you have how does that work at your program? Um, we have over 300 students and we in seventh grade we split them into instrument specific classes and so my clarinets are in one class trumpets are in another um, as much as we can the double reeds are together and low brasses together um, because we just don't have enough periods in the day or the manpower. Um, and then our other groups are split into three, the second and third year players are split into three ability based groups. So we have a, what we call symphonic is our top band and then a concert one and a concert two. And you have a staff that helps you out on the campus? Absolutely, I have um, an incredible person I work with named Nicholas Wilson and he is has just finished his fourth year at Central and his fourth year of teaching. He's doing a great job. He's really um, kind of leads up the brass and we team teach the ensembles so we, we make a pretty good team. We're happy to have him there. In addition I have some high school help that comes down. Um, the high school directors when they can will come into ensembles and occasionally we had a percussion specialist this year teaching the percussion class. And then I've got some private teachers, not, we're kind of 60% free and reduced lunch, so we don't have a huge um, amount of people that do lessons, but we um, push that as much as we can. And then my teachers are kind of heart of gold. I have a lot of private teachers that make it happen for those kids that want to take lessons um, with or without the financial resources to do so. Well, it's clearly working uh, for what, from what you're accomplishing, what your kids are doing. So kudos to you all uh, involved. Thank you. Hey, um, so tell us about remote teaching um, in your school and some of the things you've done. We're, I think we're almost two months in at this point, almost finished with the year. So what are some mm -hmm. things you've done with your students in your program? Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you I'm a terrible online teacher. I need those children in front of me. Um, Teaching on a computer has been a terrible struggle. We're doing it and we're making it work and we're trying to make band um, a positive outlet for those kids. Maybe when they're a little overwhelmed with their schoolwork, they can go to band and it's an outlet and it's something fun for them. We do a lot of Google Classroom and um, challenges on Twitter, things like that, just to keep it fun and keep them playing on their instrument is the main thing. So tell us about your challenges on Twitter. What is that and how does that work? Uh, you know, I found one um, and all, all great teaching is stolen. So this was stolen from someone that had done porch concerts, Tuesday evening porch concerts. And I challenged the kids. I posted a video of myself playing on the porch and I said, go out and play on your porch or in your backyard or wherever you can. And some of the kids have really embraced it. As a matter of fact, I've been to several social distancing porch concerts on Tuesday night when I get invited and I bring my lawn chair and set up on the sidewalk and 
listen to kids play Star Wars and Jurassic Park. And it, it's been a lot of fun. And, and I, I think um, that one was a big hit. We've done some other little challenges, um, but that one was probably the biggest hit. That's really cool. And like, so do people come out and watch? What's the response from the people in the neighborhood? Um, well, I'm, I imagine, uh, I, through my own neighborhood, I live very close to Central. And um, as we were going on a family walk through the neighborhood, I could hear kids playing their instrument outside, which absolutely warms my heart. Um, I'm not sure what the non-band people think when they're walking by, especially for the beginners. But, you know, it, 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 it's good exposure for those kids and, and gets them probably a little bit less nerves playing outside for all their neighbors. Um, the, some of the Tuesday night concerts have seven or eight people there. And I, I have to tell you, um, one that I showed up at had my superintendent sitting about 10 feet from me, which kind of shows you the support in our district for fine arts, which I really appreciate. That's cool. What a, what a cool project. You know, so many projects we've talked about on here and still this is one I've not heard of. I've heard of the porch concert. This is the first one I've heard where they've gone through Twitter and, and advertised and gone out and do that. So what a cool thing people can use. Now, is that something you think you might continue in the future? Um, I think it would be kind of fun. And I've, I've put out there on our Google Classroom, if you invite me to it, I'm going to show up. So, you know, that might be something fun we do for the nicer weather months up here and um, getting kids out there to play. When I was a beginner, my parents used to have me go outside and play on the porch so the neighbors could enjoy what, what I was doing. I think it was just to get me out of the house so they didn't have to listen to it all the time. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so some of your, your students, you mentioned you have a 60% around that percentage uh, reduced free lunch. So what kind of challenges have you had trying to get your students to communicate and do the work and, and all the stuff related to technology through this last few months? The, the technology has been an ongoing struggle and um, we actually, our school was still passing out Chromebooks to students as of last week. We, you know, they're reaching out week after week, but um, trying to reach every student when you don't know what their home life is like has been a struggle. And um, we're making a conscious effort as a school where every teacher will reach out to a certain period each week. So with that in mind, every single student is getting a personal phone call from a teacher each week, which I think is really important during this time, kind of to keep that one-on-one -on -one because um, it's, it's been kind of difficult, you know, to kind of keep them playing because you want to make sure that band is an enjoyable outlet. Um, I will tell you that the high schools have set up master classes with the Marine Band. And so the kids have been able to jump onto that and sit through a master class with a, an incredible musician. And I think that's been a really neat idea too. That's cool. And that's the United States Marine Corps um, has set those up. I've seen a few of those advertised and promoted and I know they've made a big push for it also. You have ninth graders getting ready to go to the, the senior high. So what are some things they've had to deal with in terms of getting ready, which is probably different. Maybe you guys can help out with that process for them. Well, our district is a Google Classroom for Trinity and LD Bell High School, and we are teachers in that. So we can kind of see what's going on and help facilitate those people um, and getting them in the right places for their auditions. But um, I think that the high schools were very smart about reaching out early on and making contact with those ninth graders to help the bridge between junior high and high school, make it feel a little bit less scary. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then with the technology challenges also, and that's the only way to communicate with kids, that's even tougher too. What are some things you've used on your campus with your staff to keep them, um, trying to keep everybody working and going? What are some things you all have maybe found? We, we use, um, we meet once a week as a fine arts staff and kind of brainstorm with the choir and orchestra and the art teacher just to kind of see what the challenges are, if we can help each other out. In addition, we're doing a lot of vertical alignment where we're meeting as a band staff, either through the junior highs or with the high schools. Um, and we're, we're kind of approaching this, you know, because I think everybody's in the same boat at this point where it's not about, oh my gosh, maybe I can have the most kids in 
this organization or win this award at this point i just i want to teach my band and i want to be in front of those kids and that's kind of my ultimate goal for the fall is just let me teach band and and let me get in front of the children as much as i can because um I'm, i miss them but i i think that this has kind of united us as a district because um we're willing to share we've started google drives where we're sharing um little snippets of music for the kids on we do a fun friday where every friday the kids can log on and it might be little snippets of the flintstones or star wars just to kind of keep them playing and interested but um i've seen a real camaraderie build with our district and the other teachers here to try to navigate these waters that's that's a cool project also you guys have done to to encourage kids but not the, the limit of demand but it sounds like just something another opportunity for them to to build the bridge to mm -hmm. um any anything you've tried in this process now that we've kind of had a chance to explore like over time you've moved away from you found maybe didn't work as well um i know some people are trying different things at this point or trying to find better solutions or maybe just learn in the process i i think um i'll take for instance our auditions we are we're, we do a weekly grade that we have to put in the grade book and so where i would normally do a pretty comprehensive audition um the first part of that is typically scales and typically the kids have to have them from memory to be considered for the top band and we don't want to lose those seventh graders those beginners for us that might be too scared wow. with this audition so we're taking the approach now of uh the first part of their audition was a grade that included um just play as many scales as you can in a minute there was no expectation that way a student who might struggle a little bit can submit a recording with one or two scales and then it doesn't limit my high achieving players they can do all 12 in that minute if they wanted to but I'm, I'm kind of differentiating as much as i can so we're not leaving anybody behind that's kind of my goal with this whole online teaching <laughs> for those wondering why we are sitting outside listening to dogs bark can you tell our audience why we're outside? um my family and i have spent the majority we, we bought a house about a year ago and we were inside fixing up that all of last year and this year has been outside um doing work gardening i'm officially an old person i watch the birds and <laughs> fill my bird feeder and go and work in the lawn on the lawn which we never have time to do we're not even home during daylight hours typically on an, a normal school day so it's been really nice coming out here and other than my neighbor's dog I, i'm going to go on official record here and say that dog drives us crazy but um we, we really enjoy the outside and we're spending a lot of time with family that's cool and we hear the birds and maybe we, we should send the dog a sticker that says hey, man, because, uh, <laughs> first time member uh, for that so um but that's why some people may wonder but that, i think that's i mean that's where you've been so that's that's how we get we work and get things done through this but, um, we, we do have a nice air conditioner inside it was just it's it's beautiful out here in the shade so taking advantage of it nothing wrong with that so any new tricks or tools you found maybe online that have helped you in in teaching uh, through a computer um you know the face-to-face -to, -face to me has still been the most effective so when we do our google meets um we try to do several during the week that and it could just be i'm online and if you have a question you can jump on there and ask your question or you can stay on the whole hour and it's been really interesting especially when little springs pop out or your pad comes loose and the students are holding their instrument way up by the the screen <laughs> and you're trying to troubleshoot that um it's definitely different waters trying to get that you know figured out but but i i like seeing their faces so for us um the next best thing is a zoom or a google meet just so i can see them and help out as much as i can we did do i will tell you um there's a little promotional video that we made for our sixth graders where uh, the kids kind of submitted a little snippet about why they like band and we kind of dangled a carrot in front of them and said if your video gets picked we'll offer you know we'll be coming by your house and dropping off a treat so um 
the kids were really excited about that. They all submitted little videos about why they love band and we narrowed it down to about 10 and I spent the day making Rice Krispie treats and wrapping them up and dropping them off on porches uh, around DFW just to kind of reward those kids. And I think if we had thought of this a little earlier or if it continues in the fall, we may do weekly challenges um, where if you are picked, the directors show up at your door um, just as a little thank you because it was really the highlight of this whole process was getting to go and knock on the door and the kids come out and they're so excited to see you and it really makes you it makes you miss them quite a bit but it, it kind of makes you want to do that for all 300 too <laughs> <laughs> right yes so many creative things you've all done i mean little things that that probably have a huge impact on the kids and probably last more than that day oh i remember the day that they stop by, like several of these little things, these little projects, I think a lot of people can take from and snippets. So um, uh, obviously we've been at home more. Is there anything you've done for yourself um, that you wouldn't normally do in a, a spring semester of band season? I, again, being outside during daylight hours because, uh, you know, which is a whole other topic, but the idea of, of putting kids on instruments, we're usually up at the band hall at least two weeks in the evenings fitting kids on instruments and and that's a whole other conversation about how that's going to happen in the fall but um we've been going for walks around the neighborhood with the family and um like i said just enjoying the outsides and, and outside and that's typically something that doesn't happen during until summer um and i'll tell you on that note it's such a weird and i'm sure i'm not the only one feeling this i i'm sitting at the computer quite a bit during the day, hours at a, at a time, but at the end of the day, I don't feel like anything's getting done. Like I feel, I'm sure it is, um, and we're definitely working, but it, it's, it's a weird feeling to, it feels like summer, but it's not because you're sitting at a computer trying to reach these kids. So um, I'm kind of looking forward to the real summer. Saturday and Sunday still feel like the weekend for sure right now, because we're doing so much online. Yeah, I think you're not alone. I think that's all over. Uh, and and the, just being in front of a computer and teaching to a computer, is it has its limits. And definitely in this world that we teach in music and teaching, but also teaching music and making a difference. So um, it is a challenge for everybody. Um, any shout outs you want to give? Um, I think just a shout out to my district and uh, other directors uh, in HEB. They've been super helpful and we've been communicating really well. and. Shout out to all the band directors out there who are scared to death about what's happening. You're not alone. I pretty much would give myself a third division as an online teacher. <laughs> Maybe I'm improving up to a second division. Hopefully we'll, we won't have to go past that in the fall and I can go back to standing in front of kids. But uh, if you feel like a failure during this, you're definitely not alone because it's been hard. Yeah, and, and just talking about it and listening to you talk about some of the things you've done and, and the realities of it, and we get that from a lot of folks, is just the reality of this is it's tough and for everybody, and even great programs and great teachers, fantastic teachers. I mean, it's it's just new and different and struggle, and so we're all working through this together, and hopefully this will help help someone down the road or in the process yeah. to, to make it a little bit better. So, And some great ideas, just some great little Good. things that, that I think can people can use and, and take and try in their own programs, hopefully, they, yeah. whatever that is, one of those little fun little projects you guys have done. But I think those are really, really creative and useful of the time. Um, any last words of wisdom you wanna leave our audience with? Uh, I would say, you know, I've never met a band director who doesn't wanna do their very best for kids. And, and I think that's what we're all doing right now. And um, I, I say continue beg, stealing, and borrowing from anyone you can during these times because we're, we're all in it together and we're all going to figure it out and do what's best for kids, which is the whole reason we got into teaching. So shout out to everybody who feels like it's tough, but we're in it together. So hopefully it'll, it'll get a little easier if it continues. Excellent. Absolutely. So uh, Christine Coverlidge, I want to thank you for joining us on the Hay Band Network tonight. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah, and, and so 
Um, for those of you that want to see other videos in the Hey Band Network series, we have the Remote Teaching and Leadership series. You can find that on the Hey Band Network YouTube channel. Subscribe and like those videos, and you'll see this and others. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.